Yo, what's up guys? Sorry for no video upload the past couple of days. I dropped my vlog camera, busted the lens, but it's fine. I got a replacement, it's fixed. My vlogs will be back. But today I'm going to be doing something special, something a little different from what I normally do. Uh, Star Wars comes out this week, Force Awakens, and I am a huge Star Wars fan. I've been spending a lot of time thinking about it and debating it and having theories and stuff like that. So I want you to know I've seen all Star Wars stuff except for the Clone Wars cartoons. Uh, I've played all Star Wars games, but most importantly, I've read all the brand new Marvel comics. Now, those Marvel comics are canon, so they're official Star Wars now, whereas before, um, anything that was written in as part of the expanded universe is completely negated. What I want to do now is I want to tell you my theory on who are the Knights of Ren, who is Kylo Ren, and where is my boy Luke Skywalker? So, none of these are spoilers, but they may spoil things for you. And I will be spoiling the Marvel comics a little bit. However, they take place between episode 4 and episode 5. And they take place between episode 6 and episode 7. So you're about to go see episode 7. Technically, I can't spoil anything major for you. And in between episode 4 and 5, I can't spoil anything major for you. Because I'm assuming you've seen episode 5 and 6. But there are some stuff that happens that I saw in the comics. And I was like, oh, these are set up for Force Awakens. I read this book, I think it was called Shattered Empires. It was a Marvel comic that takes place after Return of the Jedi and before Force Awakens. It spoke about Luke Skywalker and it spoke about Poe Dameron's parents, who were both in the Alliance. Now, basically what happens over these four books is they prove in the comics that Leia is Force-sensitive. Princess Leia has a vision of Darth Maul, someone she's never seen before, never encountered before, but she saw his face in her brain. That was the comics officially saying she's force sensitive, not that she just has a, a connection to Luke Skywalker like in episode five where they were able to feel each other. So these two awesome pilots, who were Poe Dameron's parents, are part of the Rebel Alliance and Luke basically gives them after he steals them, he has two little trees, two little like bonsai looking trees that he stole from the empire after the emperor was dead. And he was like, these are really important, these trees. They used to be buried at the, the Jedi temple in Coruscant. Take this other force sensitive tree and wherever you raise your son, I want you to plant this tree there. So the final frame of the comic, spoiler alert, is uh, Kess Dameron, and they're holding him right outside of their house above a Force-sensitive tree. Now, if you've been watching the trailers and stuff like that, you know that Poe Dameron is the X-Wing pilot who flies the black X-Wing, and when they asked about his character, I think it was at San Diego Comic-Con, he was like, Poe Dameron's the best pilot in the universe. And now we know that's cool because we know he's Force-sensitive because the comics confirm that. Ray and Kylo. I believe they're related. Now, I don't know if uh, Rey and Kylo Ren are, are twins, or if Rey is the daughter of Han and Leia, and Kylo is the son of Luke. I don't know. Personally, I would like if Luke had no kids, and hopefully Kylo is the son of Rey. Uh, Kylo is the son of Han and Leia, and Rey is not even a Skywalker. I don't even need her to be a Skywalker, personally. And Kylo is an angry Skywalker. I mean, as we could see, you know, uh, Skywalkers have very bad tempers. They were never raised as Jedis properly. Anakin got it when he was like eight years old. He was too old. You thought he was too old. Luke was like 17 when they started training him as a Jedi. So who knows? He could have had sex with a bitch and made baby Kylo or Rey. So I believe Kylo is a Force-sensitive Skywalker. Possibly Rey as well. But I do believe she's force sensitive. I mean, she's out there as a moisture farmer, small beginning, same thing as Anakin, same thing as Luke. So who knows? In the comics, spoiler alert once again, in between episode four and episode five, when Luke is not a full-fledged Jedi, he goes on a mission to find more about Jedis. It's pretty cool. He battles Boba Fett. Boba Fett tells Darth Vader that he has a son out there and his name is Luke Skywalker. And Luke ends up going to the pirate planet Nar Shadda. This actually has something to do with my theory of Force Awakens. And I'm sorry if I'm rambling, it's just that kind of video, ladies and gentlemen. So Luke goes to Nar Shadda, the pirate planet, and he goes looking for Gracchus the Hutt. 
Gracchus the Hutt, who he finds, you know, once Luke pulls out his lightsaber, and you got to understand, like, at this point in time, you know, this is the original trilogy, so especially in Force Awakens, you're pulling out a lightsaber, people are going to look at you and be like, who the fuck are you? Where the fuck did you get that? Is that what I think it is? That's probably worth a lot of money. So every pirate starts chasing after Luke Skywalker. He demonstrates he has some Force abilities as he outruns them and outjumps them and all that stuff. But what happens is he gets captured by Gracchus the Hutt, who basically looks like Jabba the Hutt, except he's jacked. He has huge jacked arms. It's really cool because Gracchus the Hutt looks at Luke Skywalker and he's like, I want you to know I'm obsessed with Jedis and you look like a very great collection piece. Gracchus the Hutt even unveils his necklace, which is a necklace made of lightsabers. So Luke's all like, oh shit. I only know what Jedi holocrons are from playing the video games. I don't even know if they're referenced in the movies or not. But he gives Luke a Jedi holocron. Luke acts like he doesn't know how to do it. He's never seen them before, so he doesn't know how to open it. But when his life is threatened, he opens the Jedi holocron, as well as hundreds of Jedi holocrons that Gracchus the Hutt is holding on to. Now when all of these holocrons open up, each one is a saved message from a Jedi. And there are all these important Jedi lessons and messages. And Luke's looking around now, and he's in this room, I'm sure a room he'll never forget, that has all of the Jedi paraphernalia that thankfully Gracchus the Hutt has been saving. Now this comic arc is not complete. I haven't finished reading it. I just got to that point. They grab Luke. They throw him into a training, a fighting arena. That's other stuff. Who knows? But the point is, I think this Gracchus the Hutt maintaining all of these items plays into something after Return of the Jedi. So my belief is after Return of the Jedi... You know, they want to recreate what the Old Republic was. But the Old Republic had thousands of Jedis to police and maintain the peace. So what happens is, Luke's like, I'm going to start a new Jedi Order. We're going to make a new Jedi Order. Luke goes, and remember, none of this is true now. This is only my theory. Luke goes to Gracchus the Hutt, takes all those lightsabers, takes all those holocrons, takes everything, starts to learn, and starts to become the Jedi Master he was always meant to be. However, he failed his Jedi training with Yoda. There are no other Jedi Masters. He has no one to basically follow except for the ancient messages of these holocrons and stuff like that. He has that tree. He plants that tree. He starts a Jedi Temple. You know, at this point, after Return of the Jedi, no one has really told the Empire that they've lost the war. No one's told them that they're no longer at battle. So the war wages on. But Luke begins to train his son, Kylo, maybe, or his nephew. Who knows who he starts to train? I believe Leia and Han are like, you know what? Training and a Jedi training, it's never really worked out for any Skywalker. I doubt it'll work out now. We're going to take our daughter, Rey, if it's her daughter, and we're going to get the fuck out of here, and we're going to disappear. They disappear. Now, this is where I'm going to stretch really far and throw a theory onto another theory, but it doesn't need to be such a strong theory. Andy Serkis has CG on his face. We know that. We haven't seen his character yet. His character, I believe, is General Snoke, who leads the First Order. I believe he's a powerful Sith Lord. In fact, it would tie every, everything nicely together if, in the first movie, when, or second movie, uh, Cl Clone Wars, when Palpatine is telling Anakin about Darth Plagueis the Wise, who was Palpatine's master, he could bring people back from the dead. He could bring himself back from the dead. If he's so powerful he could bring himself back from the dead, it would be valuable to fake your death. So let's say General Snoke fakes his death. But when he returns, his Darth Sidious is dead. Darth Sidious is dead. Vader's dead. There's no Sith anywhere. And now we have this Sith Lord, and we have the Rebel Alliance, and he's like, he's got to make a move. And this is all theory. And maybe it's not even Darth Plagueis. Maybe it's just some, some badass motherfucker who's been in hiding the whole time that we don't know about. But he goes, he attacks Brand New Jedi Temple. He attacks Brand New Jedi Temple. Luke realizes he's in above his head. Luke disappears. He goes into hiding. He abandons his team. Now, Darth Plagueis goes and sees... Or I'm saying Darth Plagueis. This, this Sith Lord goes and sees this collection of potentials. He grabs them takes them under his wing and basically says, look, Luke abandoned you. How terrible is that? You know, that, that I would never abandon you. You can come with me. Now that's if Kylo is Darth Plagueis' apprentice. Maybe that's the way that plays out. Maybe it's not. Maybe Darth Plagueis isn't even in it. I don't know. All I know is this. 
They're called the Knights of Ren. This is why Kylo Ren is not a Sith Lord. If Kylo Ren were a Sith Lord, and he were to look at Darth Vader's helmet and say, I'm going to finish what you started, then he would call himself Darth Kylo. He would be a Sith, but he's not a Sith. He's a Knight of Ren. So maybe he's not talking to Darth Vader when he says, I'll finish what you started. Maybe he's talking to Anakin. And I believe, and, and this has been confirmed by J.J. Abrams, that you know he thinks he's doing good. Kylo Ren is severely misunderstood. He thinks he's doing the right thing. He's not, but he thinks he's doing the right thing. He does not think he's evil. Now with Sith Lords, there's no gray area. There is bad, that's it, you're evil, that's all you do. There's no changing that. But when you call yourself a knight, in, in Star Wars universe, knights tend to have a good thing with them. Like you have Jedi Knights and then you have Sith Lords. So why would he talk to Darth Vader and say, I'll finish what you started? hold the red lightsaber but call himself a knight. Darth Plagueis has shrouded Kylo's judgment to the point that he thinks he's doing good when in reality he's not. Or maybe Luke was just training Kylo Ren and abandoned Kylo Ren because he realized he was getting too involved in the dark side and never mastered his own training, at which point Kylo Ren is like, I'm going to start the Knights of Ren and we're going to be good. And if you really want to be good and you really want to bring balance, well, you're going to have to take a fucking junkyard lightsaber that's really unstable and you're going to have to fuck shit up with it. Basically making you more dark than good. Now, another thing about Kylo Ren is his, his lightsaber is, is, is junky. It's a junkyard lightsaber. Like, that shit is homemade. When he opens it, it's like... And it's like sparking and stuff like that. No other lightsaber looks like that. I believe Luke is probably hoarding all of the stuff that he got from Gracchus the Hutt. Or maybe it was destroyed when, you know, he first got attacked by Darth Plagueis or equivalent. But what I'm saying is I believe lightsabers are extremely rare. Rey, I believe, is Force-sensitive. Poe grew up next to that tree. I believe he's Force-sensitive. I believe Finn is not Force-sensitive. But he does have that iconic lightsaber. That lightsaber is the lightsaber that Anakin Skywalker held. It's the one that he used. And then it's the one that Obi-Wan, when Obi-Wan cut off his arms and legs, it fell. Obi-Wan went over and picked up that lightsaber. And then he gave that lightsaber to Luke Skywalker in Episode 4. In Episode 5, Darth Vader cut Luke Skywalker's hand and that lightsaber fell over Cloud City. How it ended up in Finn's hands, who knows? Luke has been in hiding. And he's been learning how to become a Jedi Master. And he's been studying all holocrons. And he's had so much peace, he's almost at like a Yoda level. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm building up Luke Skywalker so much is because this is what I'm seeing, okay? I'm seeing second end of second act, third act, shit has hit the fan, you know, they, 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 they know who their enemy is, they know what they have to do, and they know they're not ready. Rey and Poe go to Luke Skywalker, who is going to be in a mentor position, and he's going to train them the ways of the Jedi. Finn is not Force sensitive. However, just because you don't know how to use the Force doesn't mean Luke Skywalker can't show you how to use a lightsaber like a fucking badass. I think Finn is not Force sensitive. However, I would like to believe that Luke Skywalker is such a strong Jedi Master, he can awaken the force inside someone. So maybe at the end of this movie, Finn, Poe, and Rey are walking into Luke Skywalker's Jedi temple that he made with artifacts from Gracchus the Hutt, the bonsai tree that he stole from the Emperor himself, and their training so that they could possibly take on Darth Plagueis, First Order, and whoever and start their new Jedi Order and even defend themselves from the Knights of Ren. That's what I believe. Obviously, you know, I, I, I'm banking on Luke being in a mentor position. I'm also banking on Luke being good. Like, I understand a lot of people expect Luke to be bad. And I believe Luke does go bad. Even in Return of the Jedi, he chokes out two Gamorrean guards. He blows up Jabba's barge. None of that is Jedi-like. Choking someone is not a Jedi power. Jedis don't have powers that just make you hurt someone. The only reason why he would have done this is if he wants to learn both sides of the Force. 
where if he wants to be the only remaining person left and have balance of the force, you have to be able to balance both. But so far, no one's been able to balance both. So, Luke goes bad. The original ending of Return of the Jedi had him put on Darth Vader's helmet. Luke goes bad. That happens. But since we're 30 years after Return of the Jedi, I would have liked Luke to have gone bad and then gone back to good within the first 10 years after Return of the Jedi, and that's why him and Leia don't talk, but it's 20 years he's been living in recluse and he's no longer bad. That's what I want. I want good Luke. This isn't Luke's story. Let's not look at Luke being bad and being like, gosh, when's he going to be good? The first three were Anakin, the next three were Luke, these next three I believe are Rey and Kylo. So that's what I'm thinking, and uh, you know, I don't personally want to get caught up in a bad Luke story uh, or a Luke on the dark side. But at the same time, I love Star Wars. I love what it's about and I'm glad I'm not the one that has to write it or come up with it because this is a very hard task. And luckily for them, I'm the type of fan that's going to walk out and enjoy it no matter what. Because even when I saw episode one, Phantom Menace, I walked out, I was like, what? That movie was fucking sick. And people are like, nah, it was shit. I'm like, why? And they're like, Jar Jar. And I'm like, yeah, that guy sucked. And they're like, yeah, but he was there for like 40% of the movie. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. And they're like, yeah, and there was a lot of like trade disputes. And I was like, oh yeah, there was that too. And everyone's like, so what? Why was it good? And I'm like, I don't know. Because his lightsaber pops out on both sides and I've never seen that before. <laughs> so like, I'm going to go see Force Awakens and I'm going to walk out and people are going to be like, that was shit. I can't believe, you know, blah, 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 or whatever. And I'm going to be like, yeah, you're right. But Captain Phasma was a shiny stormtrooper. And that was sick. So I get caught up in, in, in certain things. And I do kind of ride a hype train. I am that guy. Like, when I'm getting hyped about something, I'm like, yeah, I'm so fucking hype. And then it comes out. And the next day, I'm like, it's old. I'm already waiting for episode eight. If you made it till the end, thank you so much for watching. I know that was a lot to take in there. It was like 20 minutes straight talking about Star Wars. Now everyone knows what a fucking nerd I am. And uh, let me know in the comments section. Like I'm, out, I'm down to debate this stuff with you guys. And if you, happen to, if you happen to be here after the movie came out on the 17th, guys, don't write anything fucked up in the comments. Don't actually spoil what happens. Let's give everyone like a one month grace period before we get into it. Um, or just put a crazy spoilers tag all across your comment before you say something. Uh, but I'm going to be in the comment section. I'm going to see the movie the day it comes out. So let's talk about it. Let's see how far off I was. You know, I'll probably make a follow-up video being like, oh my God, I can't believe I said it was this and it ended up being that. But whatever, man. I'm just I'm just fired up. I'm excited. I'm talking about it. I, I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm going 100 right now. So Star Wars, man. And I'm not even paid to make this video, so... Fuck Star Wars. I don't even give a shit if you watch it or not. But I fucking love Star Wars. I hope you guys watch it so we can talk about it. All right. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Hit the like button. And if you comment, I'll probably respond. I read every single one of those bad boys. All right. Meow.